Hello, Dimitris. Hello, Thodoris. How are you today? I'm pretty fine, my friend. Me too. And I'm very glad that tonight we have the first official episode of our show, which is... In the Air Tonight with Thodoris and Dimitris. Don't forget to subscribe and to ring the bell for all the notifications. Correct. In the Air Tonight is a weekly music broadcast with amazing guests from all the rock industry and its subgenres. And tonight we are, we are so happy that we will have uh, a, a musician, a very important musician for me because I have been listening to his music since my childhood. Yes, and that specific musician is of course Mr. Thomas Wilstrom, the lead singer of Therion. Yes, I'm here. Hello, Thomas. Hi, Hello. nice to meet you guys. How are you? We too. How are you? I'm very fine. Thank you. Fine. I'm thank sitting you, here in you. Spain and the weather is fantastic. We had 27 degrees today. so it's. This is what I'm about to, to ask you. What is the, the weather the conditions weather. there? Yeah, it was perfect. I've been on the balcony all day. Uh, because <laughs> he, here in Greece right now we have about 10 to 11 degrees. Oh, that's not too or much. Or maybe less. Yeah, maybe that's less. Swedish summer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true, that's true. But it's always sunny here yeah, in Greece, as that's you know. Good. Absolutely. So, so, Mr. Wickstrom, at first we have to say many, many, many congratulations for new Therion album, Leviathan. Thank you very much. Thank it's you. amazing. It's amazing. Thank but we'll come back uh, to that later because yes, yes. at the first part <clears throat> of our show, there is always space for our guests' inspiration. So, we know that it's very difficult, but you have to manage to have a top five albums for us. I do. And, yeah, and a little comment for each of them. <clears throat> so, that's tougher, but I, I try. Yeah. Okay, uh, Let's begin if, with you, number five. if you sorry, if you can put uh, the albums in a specific row, it will be okay in order. If if you cannot, okay, I, do I it as you want. To, I prefer because I think it's very hard to because it depends it on the day. Yes, of yeah. course, of course, of course. But I will, I, I have them for you. Oh, that's then I great. will start. I will start with. Uh, I mean, this might not be metal records, you know, but I. It's okay. It's my taste. We yeah. Don't mind. Of course. Uh, one record I would like to mention, number five, we call it that. It's mm -hmm. the first Queen record. Hmm. Queen one. Queen one, yeah. Because they opened, I was very young when I got that album, you know. And I bought it, you know, or my father bought it for me. And I chose it because I thought it was a cool cover. But hmm. then I didn't know that it was pure gold inside also. And it opened me up to Freddie Mercury, and I've been following him since then. Fantastic singer. Yeah, of course, of course. So, um, number four. Number four. This is unexpected, but this is a very important album, I think, for the genre itself. And it will be the Phantom of the Opera CD, the Phantom of the Opera album. Because mm -hmm. it kind of opens up, opened up a door to hard rock fans and metal people, that musical theater can be pretty cool. And later we saw Nightwish having a big hit with a cover from that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And a second hit with Flo Janssen at a Dutch TV show, if you know. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, and with Phantom of the Opera, uh, he, she has begun another extreme career as a solo artist, yeah. Flo, with that exactly. song. Which version so, is your favorite? Which version is your favorite? Have you any favorite version of the Phantom of the Opera? Wow, well, I think I I don't know if I'm being patriot, pre, pat, patriot, pat, what do you call it? Patriot, yes, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, but I, I really love the Swedish yeah. version. Yeah, if you, yeah, yeah. If you if you can hear it, you could, should check it out. Oh, it's really of good. Of course, the of course, original one that was first. It has actually. It has actually a record back home in Stockholm. You know, Stockholm is not so big, but it played for six years oh. in Stockholm, full house. Yeah. Okay. Six years, full house. Wow. Yeah. 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 It's an amazing musical, of course. Yes. So, okay, let's, let's go, go to further. further. Number three. Number three. I come to one of my absolute favorite metal albums, which is Judas Priest, Painkiller. <laughs> 
Okay. When so, I got that, I was blown away totally. You know, and that's yeah, yeah. that's uh, a genre that is simply heavy metal. <clears throat> you know, without yes. any excuses, it's just <clears throat> a train that drives over you in a beautiful way. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> that voice, that voice of Mr. Half voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, what Amazing. can I say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't know if you will agree with me that the painkiller uh, gave a birth, if we can name in this way, mm -hmm. to a new generation of musicians. Yeah, I can. I can probably agree to that. Yes, Definitely. because because according to my opinion, uh, Pantera and the painkiller formed the later years of uh, heavy metal music. Yeah, definitely. That it was a pity that they split up after that, but yeah, they are back now, and I think they are doing fine. Yeah, of course, yeah, of course. yeah, of course. more than fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially the, the latest album was very, Amazing. very good. Very good. Yeah, yeah. very yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. I remember okay. we did um, we did a festival. French festival. What is it called? Hellfest, I think. Hellfest, Hellfest. yes, yes, it did. And, yes. And uh, it was amazing in itself that Judas Priest played before us. <laughs> <laughs> the same stage. Yeah, it's amazing. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so I had the opportunity to stand and look, watch the gig with my hands on the stage like this, and it was like <laughs> 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 I was like a little kid. Hey, lady, you looked at me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that, so you are a true fan. So I'm, okay, I'm, a, so, I'm a big yeah, fan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, true fan. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Should we go to number? Num is it number two? Yeah. It's number two. Yeah. This is an album which I think has the coolest production ever. It's the album Welcome to My Nightmare with Alice Cooper from 75. Mm -hmm. um, when you put this album on, it's taking you on a, on a, a horror journey, really. And it has the same producer that produced Pink Floyd. Mm -hmm. But, I mean... It's amazing. Everybody plays good. He sings fantastic. I mean, in his way, of course. And the production with it, with the strings and the orchestra in the background and, and flutes and everything, it's, it's uh, mind blowing. Really recommend that album. Yeah, of course, indeed. So let's go to the top number one. Yeah. To the top, this is what. Uh, an extremely important album for me. It's probably, without this album, I probably wouldn't sit here speaking to you now. I would do something else. <laughs> oh. The first, Kiss Alive. Oh. oh. A live album. So a live yes. album. Yeah. It's, uh, when I saw the picture, I was like, that's the job that I want to have. <laughs> I got to I got to buy makeup, you know, because you have to look like that. That yeah. that's it. <laughs> and also I had the, the the first song I heard was rock and roll all night and party every day. And back in those days, I'm I'm pretty old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the, the 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 terminology, the the word heavy metal didn't exist yet in that sense, you know. It was hard rock. And this was the hardest thing you could hear in those yeah. days. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, my father was an opera singer and I came home. I'm going to do my rebellion period now. <laughs> look at this. And I was hoping he was going to hate it. But he said, oh, they look cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were oh, lucky. You, you were destroyed lucky. it. Yeah. <laughs> what a disaster. What a yeah. disaster for a revolution. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, let's go to our number two top five. Yes, because which is have, about yeah, yeah. Which, is, which is about your favorite singers. Uh, the singers. Yes, oh, as right. you are a singer too. Okay, number number five then, a mm -hmm. classical one. It's Pavarotti. Oh, mm. really? No, Luciano. Need. Luciano. No, yeah. Have you no, seen him? Have you seen him performing live? Not for it. Not in real life, but of course in in yeah. in YouTube yeah, and, yeah. and yes. I mean. Don't need an explanation, does it? He, yeah, what a voice. Of course. Of course. What of a course. voice. Of course. Then, um, I had Freddie Mercury. Uh, Freddie Mercury. Okay. It's, um, not only is he a good singer, he's also a fantastic performer. 
Yeah, of course. And he, he could do he could do basically everything. They did everything from hard rock to, to walls, I don't know. And he yes. managed to do do it all. Mm-hmm. And still and he managed, his personality and he, in it. Yes, and he managed to sing everything. Yeah. Every every kind of music. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And it was if you got really go in and analyze, you know, the vocals in it and listening to the record, it's not perfect, but that doesn't mm-hmm. matter. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it has a soul. Yeah, of course. It has a soul and it lives. Today you have this auto-tune and everything, you know, you can make a singer sing exactly in tune, you know, but it it lacks something, you know. Yeah. It lacks the spirit, you know. Originality. Yes. Yes. Originality. Yeah. yes. All right. Number three. Num- number three. Mm-hmm. I, I will also say that this is not an order. These are yeah, yeah, okay, 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 yes. Yeah. We, we name it as an order. It's, uh, it's the great Ronnie James Dio. Oh. Love him. It's, uh, it's the little man with the big voice. <laughs> of course. The one no, and only so, for me. For me? The on, for me, it's, he's the one and only. Yeah, I mean. He was, well, he is. Yeah. <laughs> But and I mean, he was all, he will always be one of those, you know, iconic hard rock metal singers, you know, that everybody will try to sound like, but mm-hmm. nobody can. Of course. <laughs> and and uh, I also me- heard, and I also heard, I never met him personally, but I also heard that he was was a very nice man. Yes, yeah. and for me as. Uh, uh, as listener. He was also no, no, not as a listener. Uh, as Freddie Mercury, I believe Ronnie James Dio is the second singer that uh, could sing everything. Yeah, he could. I, I only heard him singing rock, but he could probably do musical theater if he yeah, wanted yeah. to, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Yeah. Yeah, because he has a, um, a, a vibrate, how, how we call it in the, as a singer? Vibrato. 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 Yeah. Yes, sorry, sorry. vibrato, yeah. yes. Not he has vibrator. a very nice vibrato. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And, number and then two. number two, uh, mm-hmm. um, I wrote Glenn Hughes. Oh, oh Glenn Hughes. Yeah. Glenn Hughes. Oh. yeah. You because really like the high pitch voice. I love his high pitch. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because he still can pull it off. And he's, I don't know, 70, over 70. More than yeah, 70. Yeah, yeah. More than yeah. 70. Oh, yeah. And, you know, normally you hear it's normal to have a voice change with age, you know. Yeah. But he seems to have some gene in his body that doesn't know about that because he still hits those high notes like he was 19. Yeah, I don't and know. He plays how he the bass simultaneously. Yeah, yeah. And, and an excellent bass player. Yeah. Yeah. And he. Uh, and, uh, and in his timbre of voice, you know, he has this blues uh, thing, you know, yeah. Yeah, the yeah, almost yeah. So black soul music spirit in his voice, you know. Yeah. That it makes it very, very personal. He has just released an album uh, last Friday with mm. the Dead Desis. Oh, really? And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yes, with, it has. It's a, with Mr. It's a super group. It's a super group. Wow. Uh, so, oh. Somewhere in the world, there is a very rich man that uh, hires uh, his favorite uh, singers, that? bass players, guitar players. Wow. And uh, these are forming a band under the name The Dead Daisies. Yeah, yes. Oh, he must now be very rich. And uh, Dimitris, I, I don't think they are on tour. No one. Uh, not yet, but they will be. No. Is, is Mr. Huge, is Mr. Doug Aldrich of White yes. Snake, yeah, the guitar yeah. player, and yeah. Mr. Dean Castronovo the of drummer. Journey, 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 etc. He drums. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and he can sing too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a yeah, great lineup. Very good. Yeah. yeah, it's a great, great cool. lineup. So now you know, if, you, if you have some time, listen to the album because it's nice. I will definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, have, they, they have, they re- have, as the Daisies, they have released other albums too with other lineups. But for yeah. me, this effort is their best. Uh huh. Okay. I so now you know. So now you now know. I know. <laughs> what Mr. Huge is doing these days. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And okay. number one. Number no, one, uh, maybe you can guess who it is. Um, this is Mr. Rob Halford. Ah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 correct. Yeah, yeah. Since, since 
I'm working with metal, you know, and and um, he has the title Metal God. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I think he's a amazing performer, amazing singer, still. Even though his voice is a little older, naturally, yeah. but yeah. it still has its charm, you know. Mm. Yes, of course, of course. Yeah. He's amazing, even at uh, this age. Yeah. Of Hopefully, we'll, uh, we'll watch them uh, again performing live. I next think year. we will. Next I, year. I think, yeah. <laughs> In a festival with uh, Therion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Mr. Wickstrom, now we're going to the second part of our show. Which is, about, <laughs> <laughs> which is about which uh, is about your own music. Oh, great! Of course, yeah. and uh, something uh, um, inspired by you. So, let's go to Leviathan, of course. Yes, the new album of Therion. How was the process of creation of Leviathan? Was it completed before the pandemic, or we can find elements of the current global situation in it? You. Uh you will find a, a total pandemic situation about this album. It was like this. Before uh, this album, we made a, a rock opera called, called Beloved Antichrist, which is three album, three hours long, enormous. And before that, we did <clears throat> a French cover album. Mm -hmm. Fleur de Mal. Fleur de, Fleur de Mal. Mal. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so me and Christopher had a talk, Let, let's make a new album and let's go home, you know, let's make a n <laughs> yeah. normal Therion album, as, it, as the fans know it. And yeah, we, ag we agreed to that. And this is right before the pandemic starts. Um, so we started to, to write material, you know, and sending each other songs, you know, what do you think about this? Can we change this? And can you write a verse for this or blah, blah, blah. And then the world stopped, you know, the hmm. pandemic broke out. And um, we had planned to record the whole album in Malta, where Christopher lives today. Oh. Um, obviously, that couldn't happen because everything <clears throat> was closed. We had extreme restrictions here in Spain in the beginning. Mm, yes, we know that. Yeah. And uh, so I couldn't go anywhere. Nobody could. The only one who could travel over to Malta was Chris, Christian Vidal from Argentina. He went over to, to nail the, the, the uh, rhythm guitars. Then he had to return because of the pandemic. So what we did, we, um, we wrote a bunch of songs, you know, forward and back. And you know that the amount of terabytes that has been passing through this <laughs> yeah. must be some kind of a record. <laughs> so one day we said, hey, we have enough now. That, let's, let's decide what songs to record so we did and um, it turned out that we had to record the album separately in eight different countries wow yeah. <laughs> more than game of thrones <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 so th this this album has a big p all over it stands for pandemic you know <laughs> yeah 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 okay it's uh, it's okay because with the technology of today you can do this yeah but the, the minus side is that you don't have that direct conversation that you can have when you record together, you know. Of course. Let's try this, let's try that. Yeah. On the plus side, I can do a little more what I want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true, that's true. Yeah. And uh, the title of the album, Leviathan, uh, is yeah. something like a, an allegory, a symbolism that uh, could be referred to the pandemic. It could. It could, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I think Christopher decided. Yeah, that we know. Uh, That's true. Because I always ask him, you know, what what do you what, what is the title gonna be? And he already knows that it's gonna yeah. be Leviathan, you know. Mm. So I wrote a song called Leviathan that I sent to him. But that song came on the album, and it's called Nocturnal Light today. Oh, yeah, great song. Thank you. Great, great one. A great yeah. album with great songs, of course. Thank you very yeah. much. Mm. And yeah, yeah. Uh, Thomas, in your last effort, uh, yes, in your last effort, you have a very special guest who is Mr. Marco Hietala. Yeah. We, we know him from Nightwish. Uh, have you met him during the process? And uh, one more question Do you share his opinion on uh, the statements he made a few days before for the music industry? 
Yes, I do. I do. I, we, I, I'm not the same person as him, so I live with it because I, you know, I love this lifestyle. I love working with music, even though he has points in what he's saying. Mm -hmm. you know. And I think a lot of people shares, shares that with him. Mm -hmm. and I, I didn't meet Marco during this process, but I have met him before and he's a very... No, no, very... no, okay, okay, we yeah. know that, uh, okay. Yeah, and we are, of course, very proud to have him on the album. Yeah. 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 And he, it was so funny because he was supposed to, to record the, the choruses on, on the song Tuonella, but he wound, winded up recording the whole song. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's why we have two versions on the... On that's the, good for us. Yeah, that's good for us, the fans. Too, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Which is uh, maybe the hit of the album. The hit yes. song of the album. One, so, one of so the so hits. One of no, yeah. it's, fu it's full of hits, but uh, Tuonella yes. is uh, maybe the most uh, pop in a good way. Yeah. yeah. Because well, of the vocals also... and, yeah, yeah. and the catchy yes. refrain. It has a funny story to it as well, because... As I told you before, we were sending these songs forward and back to each other, me and Christopher. And he sent me the background of Tuonella, where the melody is played on the piano, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because he doesn't sing. <laughs> and, uh, and he said, I, but I have to imagine that, and I'm pretty good with, with, with that. So, And he said, I'm not sure about this song. It's not so good, I think. And I told Christopher, for once in your life, listen to me. This is very good. Let's let's make this a keeper. Um, for once, he listened to me. So yeah, yeah. thank God. So that was the first time that he have uh, that he has ever listened to you. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Oh, <laughs> no, that's no, it's not that bad. Oh, that's a, that, no, no. that's a bit unfair for you. You yeah. are uh, you are his other half. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm I'm joking a little. Yeah, but, of course, of course. And and me and him also have this hard. Yeah, yeah, fights, yes. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah of but for fun, you know what of I mean? Course, yeah, of course, yeah. of course. It's the uh, process of No, creation. no, he, he's, uh, I mean, he's uh, probably one of the best uh, music partners I ever had, you know. He is. And we worked he's a very, mastermind. Yeah, and we worked also, very good together, yes. and he's listening to other people, you know. And, uh, yes, yes. Even if I told that to him, you know. Yeah. So, um an expansion to that question is um, that um, now you are considered as a permanent creator of Therion. Of course, yeah. a co-creator. Uh, Therion uh, was a band only of uh, Mr. Johnson, as we knew. But now you are a total 50% uh, co-creator of this album. Yeah, so, more or less, yeah. Yes, yes, of course. So what was your creative part during Leviathan album? Oh, my creative part was that I was writing more than ever in my whole life, you know. Oh. Because there was basically nothing else to do. <laughs> and we, we, were, we were allowed to go out to the supermarket or go out with the trash. That was it, you know. Hmm. And, you know, I, I like work. So I, I, I try to stay as busy as possible, you know, because I, I enjoy it. I enjoy to write music. I love... I mean, I, I don't sit and wait for inspiration. I go in here to the studio and I put the piano on and I start to play. 90% that comes out is shit, but the rest <laughs> of the 10% are, you know. Th thank and... you for that 10%. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so songs, arrange, I've done a lot of arrangement, a lot of the, the choirs and the orchestrations that you hear comes from me, you know. So... Yeah, that's it. Okay. That's great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, would it be possible to share with us some details on the creation process of an album by your songwriting duo with uh, Mr. Johnson? Yeah. When the... you were writing um, in person, not uh, mm -hmm. in Leviathan, uh, that you told that uh, it was an exchange of terabytes. Yes, yeah. yes. When you were in person, in Beloved and in Christ, uh, sure was uh, something that Mr. Johnson uh, have uh, created, but yeah. at Fleur de Mal and uh, in everything other process of creation, mm -hmm. you have been in person. What's the typical process on that? Well, when we did the Fleur de Mal, we were sitting together a lot, actually, to fix with those songs because they are very different from the originals now. Yeah. And... Uh, and we were sitting in, in Christopher's studio, who is still living in Sweden. 
just outside Stockholm. And we were sitting and, you know, it's like having a, a, a ball that we throw to each other. <laughs> try something here. And she throws it back. No, that was not good. And I, I get to try. Put a, a, a keyboard here and play the guitar like this instead, you know. And, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, um, it's a teamwork. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it can be. And, and it can other be. times. And other times, you know, the computer has taken over our lives so much. Other times, I, when we both lived in Stockholm, instead of going there, I, I said to him, I have an idea. Can I mail it to you? Hmm. And, yeah, uh, yeah. and he sent back uh, a version with guitars on, for example. And, you know, we, yeah. and also in the recording process, when we work together, me and Christopher, it's, uh, we work hard. <clears throat> But we have mm. fun. We have a lot of fun. And the, the result and the, the result of every album is more than successful. Of course. Yeah. As an artistic creation for sure. As an artistic for sure. creation yes. for sure. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Thomas, so, Thomas, sorry, one more question. Uh, sure. Christopher made a statement that uh, Leviathan is one of the three albums that you have already created. Yes. Tell us about that. Uh, anything you want. Yeah, I can tell you, the, the, when he said already created, doesn't mean they are, it's not recorded yet. Yeah. Ah. But, no, no. But so, it will so you don't have three albums ready in, in full? No. Ah, okay. we, have, we have the material done for it. And the basic but, ideas, more or less. Yes, exactly. Okay, okay, okay. But that doesn't mean if, if I write the super song tomorrow, which is not <laughs> likely because I will not be home, but <laughs> if, I mean, that will definitely be able to compete with the material that it, I mean okay. when we wrote for this first uh, Leviathan that is out now our new mm -hmm. album we wrote so many songs hmm. so we had to say stop a moment now we have to choose songs and the leftovers from this album I don't like to call it leftovers because it sounds like they are not as good but that's not the case it's just simply that they couldn't be there is no room for it you know yeah so, um, what we are planning to do is release that album next year, Leviathan 2, if it's going to oh. be called that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, it's going to be a bit, as we plan it, a bit darker and more melancholic. That's yeah. the plan. Okay. Uh, That's interesting. Third, Very and interesting. The third one. Yeah. The third one Sorry, will Thomas. Be, will, there be any, will there be any doom elements too or not? I, well, maybe a little, maybe a little, not like, wouldn't sound like Candlemas, candle but, no, but, no, 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 of course yeah. not, no, of course, of course, but uh, maybe some slow parts, some Absolutely. slower parts and um, heavy, heavy yeah. slow parts. Yes, yeah, okay, it will. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, is there any basic uh, lyrical idea during the Leviathan, Le Le Leviathan album? No, the, the thing with Therion, we... Uh, it's a guy called Per who writes all the lyrics for us. He's a, he's a poet and, you know, works with writing lyrics. And uh, for me, I could never write those kind of lyrics you know, <laughs> because I don't have enough knowledge ab about the topics, you know. Th that's what it is. But Per has and Christopher has too. Yeah. So Christopher tells him this, this song is called, for example, Leviathan. And he sends the, the, the demo over where I sing only stupid words, you know, but the correct <laughs> yeah, melody. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and this guy pair is so fast. You can send a thing for him 10 o'clock in the morning and latest 10 o'clock in the evening, you get the result back and it's perfect. Wow. A superhero yeah, of some lyrics. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> a flash of lyrics. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thomas, your last effort was, uh, as you told us, was recorded on distance. Yeah. Do you think that uh, this might be the current and next way of recording an album due to some disadvantages, the budget or uh, not enough time? I hope not. I hope, th I mean, this is the best solution we have now when the world looks like it looks, but I definitely hope that we're going to record the, uh, the old fashioned way next time because it's yeah. more lustful. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, I think that maybe a newcomer 
might not follow what you will do <laughs> no, due to no, the maybe. lack of time or or of yeah, course that, lack of budget and yeah that that's that's of course a free choice but yeah, if you yeah. ask me what i i would want to do is definitely to to record together okay okay understood yeah. totally understood mm. Leviathan is described uh, by Christopher as a classic Therion hit album. Yeah. Okay, so was that on purpose in order to create uh, a total new context according to Beloved Anti Christ? Yeah, I mean, like I said before, we, we <clears throat> I understand the point of view Christopher had with the, <clears throat> the earlier productions we did because. He had this band since like the Stone Age, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and I understand that he wanted to experiment with other stuff. He wanted to do this French album, the Beloved Antichrist, that he has been dreaming of doing for many years, actually. Now he had the chance to do it. So I, I totally understand. But after that, we we talked to each other and let's and we said, let's go back home. Let's let's do classic theory again, you know. And um, and so we did. And we we went back to check out albums like Lemuria and Sirius B and a little bit Gothic Kabbalah and the old catalog. And I wouldn't say that we were trying to copy how it sounded back then. But we wanted to capture the the spirit that those songs had and put them into 2021. Of course. And you did it. And you Thank did you. It perfectly. That, that was yes, the idea. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Totally successful. Thank you. Okay. Um, what I would like right now is to share with us some memories, good or bad, from the Cadillac era. Oh. What uh, What do you remember? I oh, was, I re as I told you before, I was too young, so I would like to learn some things from that era because I, I believe that uh, during this time, the um, Heavy metal was not so. Um, how can I say it? Um, was expanded. not. No, no, not expanded. Was not as it is today. No. I, I believe today. Today, all the bands have too many facilities in order to create an album, and back then there were many difficulties. It so was. Tell us. I mean, first of all, first of all, back then metal, you know that. Grunge was the big thing. Nirvana yeah. was the big thing, yeah. and it came almost overnight, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. To, to, to change the whole scene. But I remember I was playing in in a in a cover band. You know, we did metal covers, and I known the guys in Candlemas for a long time bef before the album was recorded. Mm -hmm. And Leif came to see this band that I was playing in. You know, and and he came after the gig and said, "Do you, do you want to come down and sing some demos for our new album?" Yeah, but why? You have a singer, you know. Hmm. Now he's not in the band anymore, and I still don't know to this date whether he left or he was kicked out. I don't know, because I know Messiah as well. We're good friends, and he says one thing, and and the other guy says another <laughs> yeah. thing. So, and and but, Messiah, sorry, and Messiah is another unique voice. And absolutely, oh, absolutely, oh. unique guy, very cool. Oh. <laughs> and um, well, but, but I agreed to go down to the studio and do the demo. And I remember, I think the first song we recorded was "Julie Laughs No More." Um, and after that, um, "The Dying Illusion." And those, and all of a sudden, the whole album was recorded. And I thought it was a demo, you know, <laughs> more or less. So I sort of. I didn't ask to be in the band, and I wasn't asked to be in the band. But all of a sudden, I was there. Oh, okay, <laughs> you yeah, you just sang. Yeah, it just happened okay. during this process. Uh, our new singer Thomas and I. Was, yeah, you know. <laughs> okay. And, and, yeah, yeah, more or less. And okay. but you know, it's mixed emotions. I really liked the album, but back then, you know, people expected Messiah, and they, you know, what Leif also told me that. They were wanted to take a step back from the really doomy stuff, you know. And uh, that wasn't back then so popular amongst the hardcore fans, you know. And Messiah's shoes is pretty big to fill. Not only is he a 
very special singer. He's also a very yeah. special person, you know, this enormous body with the... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and there yeah. I came, you know, with blonde hair and the glam <laughs> look, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, so... The Def Leppard guy. Yeah, <laughs> sort of. Yeah, that's how people looked at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you know, true. because uh, people think, people thought that, oh, this guy sang melodic. He can't sing anything else. But because people think like that, you know, but, uh, you know, today this album is very praised, it, yes. but it, it, it took two decades, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but I'm happy with it. It was it's nice memories and I love the guys. Yeah. Back then, did you, did you have any bad comments from devoted fans of uh, Candlemas? Oh, a lot. <laughs> oh, a lot. A lot. Oh. Yeah, because oh. people, they, they don't like changes, you know. Yeah. It, it's like okay. Kiss fans that, that they don't like when the original members... He, I know Messiah wasn't original, but it's the face of Candlemas, you know. So it, it a is. lot, uh, a lot, and it was pretty... I was young, so it was pretty painful for me, you know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Because I know I was doing a good job, but I, I felt like it doesn't matter what I do, they will never accept me, you know. Hmm. Okay. Mm. So but I also uh, I also sorry. had a lot of good comments I got to say. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. Till now, till now, till now, till now after so many, after I don't I don't think that there is there is any metal fan that can hear chapter six and had bad comments nowadays for you. No, nowadays it's only positive. That's <laughs> especially the dying illusion. <laughs> you don't know how much I love it. So. Oh, oh Boris, stay you. calm. Don't stay know. calm. Stay calm, for Boris. Sorry. Stay calm. <laughs> no, I'm I'm happy. I, yes, uh, thank because, you so much. Yes, because that was the first song I heard from Cadlemas. Oh yeah, yeah. So for me, for me, will will uh, will be a special moment. Uh huh. Will, forever. How great! Okay. Thank you. So. After that special moment of Thodoris, let's go to Mr. Wilson. So, yes. Thomas, uh, you are definitely a performer inspired by musical theater. And that's uh, totally obvious. Yes. Uh, do you have um, any musical, except from Phantom of the Opera that you've said before, yeah, that participate... inspires you the most? Well, I, I grew up with a father who was an opera singer. Yes, yes, you know so, that. So I was with him, and he did a lot of musical theater as well. So I, 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 um, I was practically spending every evening at the theater with him while he was on stage. Some, some of the, the, the plays, I, I, I know the words better than he did. <laughs> <laughs> Can you recall But, any specific, specific music? <clears throat> well, I, I, I remember he did Carmen on the, on the Royal Carmen. Opera. Oh. And um, I don't know the amount of opera he did because he was employed by the state opera, yeah. the royal opera. Yeah, yeah. But then I saw um, he, he did a lot of comedy as well mm. that I went to see. And it was fun, you know. And my father was pretty short, so he always played this <laughs> funny <laughs> short type, you know. Danny DeVito guy. <laughs> yeah, sort of. So, yeah, he, he had that length. Maybe, yeah. a little, maybe a little taller, but... Yeah. And I don't know how I went up to be, become 178. Because Ooh. my mother and father was very short people. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> But yeah. uh, on stage, you seem to um, fulfill every aspect of the stage. And that's because uh, you are a great performer doing uh, the acting on stage. Yeah, And that's, because... that's something that defines you. I think I, I think I have that from my father. Mm. He, he told me singing is only a part of this, he said. You, you, because... Performing is, hmm. is what you should go for. Yeah, it's and it's important failure. to sing good, but but also to to entertain the people who stand there. I, nothing bores me more than you know guys with black pants and hmm. black shirt with with some spaghetti logo type on that looks down on their shoes standing there in place like this. Come on, <laughs> yeah, okay. not for not for me. <laughs> Not How me. is touring with your own daughter? Was good. Oh. I remember. Yeah, um, she's not in the band anymore, though. But um, okay, yes. I remember her first gig was was at Bloodstock Festival in in UK, and she was only 17. Wow! Well, and well. I was more nervous than her. She did a great <laughs> job, you know. <laughs> and and then 
and then we went on tour together and you know uh, we became like colleagues the father and daughter thing you know disappeared while we toured we Ooh. became like colleagues and friends more and then we when we came home it was back to the normal relation <laughs> but and i remember i told her once if you don't spy on me, I won't spy on you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's a great connection uh, between yeah. father and daughter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Tadori, we are about to, Dimitri, to, we are closing to the end right now. Eh? Okay, let's go to the final two questions. Two questions, yes. yes. For Thomas. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you want to start, Tadori? Yes, of course. Um, what's your favorite Ferion song according to live performances? Oh, I have to say it's the rise of Sodom and Gomorrah mm. because that song okay. sorry, know, sorry. is one of the iconic one. What a song, what a song, sorry. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> sorry. Because, you, you know, it, it's not so challenging to voice wise to sing that one, but when mm. that intro starts, that, 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 that. And to hear the audience reaction to that is, it's mind blowing every yeah. night. Yeah. Yeah. So, as we're coming to the end, we have to thank Thomas. It was a pleasure talking to him. A pleasure yes. talking of to course, you guys. It was course. a pleasure listening to the album, of course. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for being in our broadcast uh, tonight. And let's go to the final question, uh, which is uh, another one uh, about um, the Therion. What a surprise! You remember... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you, of course. Yeah. So, do you remember the specific details when you were informed that you will be joining the band? Totally. Totally. Sure, sure it I was in my, I, uh, I remember the room. I was in my kitchen. Oh. <laughs> and I got a phone call from a guy called Christopher Johnson. <laughs> who is oh. he? From a guy. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, he told who he was. And, and, you, and then he told me that uh, we are um, going on a world tour and um, we don't have a singer anymore. Are you interested? And I was like, B uh, yeah, but I need to hear the band more, you know. Can you send me something? And other people would have sent MP3 things. On No, he sent me the whole catalog in a big bag. Like <laughs> what a professional. With CDs, yeah. I had it the day after. He sent it with the Express uh, post, you know. So I was listening to the to the song Der Mitternachts Löwe, that's from Gothic Kabbalah. And only because it was the, the top record on the pile of <laughs> records. I took that, you know, and put it on. And I think I listened to the half of the song and I was blown away by it. And I called him up. I, I'm in. Where do we, when do we start? Yeah, in one month or so, he said. I don't remember exact, but where? Wacken Festival. Wow. That was the first gig. <laughs> <laughs> the first gig at Wacken. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> For I a new him, yeah, that, that's a good little warm up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good little. Yes. No, not so little. <laughs> no. it, it's very it's very similar to Flor Jarsen's story with yeah. Nedwis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of her first uh, um, first uh, performances was at Wacken. Yeah, yeah. There you go. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And but she had only two days to learn the songs. Oh, poor girl. <laughs> yeah. That's an amazing story for another broadcast. So, yeah. Thomas, thank you very much. <clears throat> very, very much. Nice. Very much. Yes, it was a pleasure talking much. to you. Yes. We be too. healthy. Be healthy. We hope to see you soon performing live here in Greece. Yes. Yeah, I hope to meet you guys. It yeah, will be yeah, fun. Yeah. We yes, will we will come to meet you in person. We yeah, promise. That's good. Of course, that of course. Yes, good. yes. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Bye Take bye. Care. Thodori. He Mitten. was <laughs> Thomas Wilstrom yeah. of Therion. It was an amazing interview for the new album, of course, of Therion, Leviathan, or yes. something uh, like that. Because in Greek, we must inform our audience that the pronunciation of the word is Leviathan. Yes. So and and I think in English language is the same. No, no, it's uh, something like uh, Mr. Wilkstrom uh, said it, oh, okay. Leviathan or something like that. Okay, okay. So, it is an amazing <clears throat> album, as you all know nowadays. Full of Mr. hits. 
full of hits, of course. Yes. And uh, Mr. Wilkstrom uh, said uh, everything about its creation, about its collaboration uh, with Mr. Johnson, okay. mastermind of Therion. And to tell you the truth, I was very, very happy that uh, he replied uh, some questions for the Cadla Masera. Of course, of because course. Because th this is my childhood, as we said before. <laughs> this is your childhood, because yeah. you're an old man, Thoris. Okay, okay. So, don't forget, you're watching in the air tonight broadcast. Don't forget also to subscribe and to ring the bell for all the notifications. And also tell your friends about us in order tell to subscribe. Yes. Of course. About that lovely guy, as Thodoris is. And Dimitris, of course, of the handsome. Course. So, goodbye. Good night. Guys. Until See next you. time. Until next yes. time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.